Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. I have this mixer here. This is basically a two-zone mixer. So it has two microphone inputs, it has five audio, channel input stereo, another input marked FOH, and then we have the output. So we have a master output and we have a zone output which can be any of the individual channels from one to five, or it can be a mix of them, yeah? That's basically what it is. This obviously fits into a 19 inch rack. And we have phono connectors on, a few jack sockets. So that's basically what we have. Now, the guy who brought me this one in said that a couple of the channels are not working properly, but he's speaking pretty much all Spanish, so I kind of get the gist of what he's saying to me. From what I can see, and I have tried this, I will show you, and then you can also make your mind up, yeah. I have this connected to my speakers, just my little computer speakers, and this is the audio input. So this is coming in from my computer, the cable isn't very long, but I think it will actually reach. So, if we just go to the various channels on here, we'll start with N1, because I don't have a microphone sitting around here to try the mic input with. And he didn't say that was a problem, he said the problem was on here somewhere. So, let's switch on. And you'll see that two of the LEDs here are on. So, this is the signal LED, and they seem to be on regardless of what you do with the volume controls on channels three and four the other ones are all out okay i've got an audio signal on input one i did try some music but a lot of you guys have been telling me to use an audio sweep generator so i found some free software that gives a rising audio tone basically and you should be able to hear that Unfortunately, this program doesn't kind of like repeat for whatever reason. It stops, it won't do it over and over again, which is a bit of a shame because that would be really useful. Yeah, I told it to stop that time. I'll link in the video description to the software I'm using. It's just a free online generator. Okay. So you can see the level it actually goes down as the frequency goes up this is the master output and this is the zone output so they have separate volume controls i've got the source just set to mix so any of the inputs will output onto both let's just go again somebody knows a free one of these but i'll actually just repeat let me know yeah i perhaps should have looked a bit harder so that's how input one is behaving. Let's just go to input two. Okay, we'll go again. That is a bit higher volume. Now, on the back of here are some little... Uh, trim levels that effectively set the maximum volume for the various channels they're not set the same so i'm going to leave them because i'm suspecting wherever this is installed he has them set the way he wants them but we clearly can hear the tone but i'll just turn the output down a little bit again So that sounds fine, yeah. Now let's go to one of these channels which is lit up all the time. So this is channel three. Turn the volume up a bit. And you see, it works. I'll turn these ones down because I'm not using them now. Turn this up a bit more. So although the LED is on permanently, which I'm sure represents some sort of fault, The output works. Yeah. Huh? 
Let's try channel four, so that's the other one that's lit up all the time. Okay. So channel four. That's just a bad connection on my lead, that buzzing by the way. You hear that? I've tried a couple of leads. I'm gonna have to get myself some good quality phono leads. But again, it's working the same. So those channels clearly work even though the LEDs are on permanently. Uh. One more channel to go, channel five. Okay, so let's go again. And on this one, the LED indicates you have a signal. So the top and bottom of this is I can't really find anything wrong with this apart from the fact that a couple of these LEDs are stuck on and that isn't really what he said was wrong with it. I do have the user manual for this. So this is the actual mixer LD zone 622. These are really meant for places like restaurants and bars and these sort of places, possibly where you have one amplifier or more running the audio system indoors, another one outdoors, or maybe for a beer garden or something. So you can have a different audio source outside or you can have the same audio source in both indoors and outdoors, but with different volumes or different levels of bass, treble, that sort of thing. So that's basically what it seems to be intended to do. It also has a talk over feature. So with the microphone channel, so you can effectively just speak and it takes over the music. It can be used for announcements and such like happy birthday or whatever, they, or run as a fire, yeah. It also has connections on the back for remote muting. So that's what this thing is really designed to do. So I have a user manual, what I don't have and can't find is a schematic. I've been in touch with the guy who brought me this one in, Jose, his name actually, will probably get mentioned again, so there you go, Jose brought me this one in. He says that the master volume control you have to waggle it to get it to work. It is quite loose, actually, that one. My well, other one isn't much better. He also says that the output on one channel is much louder than the other, so like the stereo balance. Now, the meter here just shows me, like, as in mono, or both channels together, so... It doesn't really indicate that. I was using the master output, so this is where I was actually connecting from. We have uh, a max level adjustment here, and this one says T slash O level. I'd have to just check what that is. It doesn't say balance, but I'm not sure exactly what that is, so we'll have a look at that one. The other outputs here, so I wasn't using this output because I didn't have the right connector, basically. This just has, you can see, max level high and low, which is the high pass and low pass, basically, bass and treble. I'm sure it will explain what this one is in the instruction manual. So we can have a look at that. And I will do as he said, let's get a part and let's see if I have the actual correct connector for this. I say that is visibly loose. That one is a switch. That one doesn't move as much. They all move a bit, you know, it's like maybe, you know, these are much firmer still move a bit it's probably just the pcb moving slightly okay so let's see what this is just to be sure we know and then let's see if we can change this potentiometer which he's asked me to do okay so t slash o level this is the torque over level so this sets the level at which the volume of the microphone takes over from the audio yeah this is for announcements and such like so that's nothing really to do with this. I'll go with what he said. Jose, who does watch this channel, also asked me if I would insert a short advertisement for his nightclub. So here you go.
Okay, so I hope you didn't mind that. That's one of the activities that his company, Sonny Yadda, are actually involved with. They also are highly involved with the carnivals we have here, with the big carotza or floats that go out onto the streets with high-powered sound systems on. We have a big party in the street as often as we can here. Okay, so there you go. Now let's see if we can get on and fix this, or at least I'll do what he asked and I'll try it again. Although in fairness, it seemed to work for me anyway. But you know, customer is always right. Okay, so first look inside it, quick look around then. This is a USB interface we see here. The user manual says you can use this as a mixer to control audio sources on the PC and you can also use it effectively as a player so you can play music from the computer through here. That's why we have this little button here, USB or line on channel 5 okay nothing much in the middle of this just two PCBs front and back linear transformer it looks like I'm guessing it's linear I mean there's a bit of weight in that end this is your main smoothing capacitors the rectifier diodes okay just things to say on it just out of interest just out of interest to see what this is Oh yeah, linear transformer which it tells us the primary voltage and the secondary voltage. Here we basically have all the output connectors and here we have all the controls. So these two volume controls disappear into this thing somewhere. I mean these ones we can see. Yeah, these are the six pin types. So these stereo pots basically. We have the two ends of the track and the wipe and the same again. I think that is the pin out, they're not hard to work out what they are. But these ones go into these things, so these look different. Okay. And this is what we need to change. This all comes apart quite easily by the looks of it. But let me just get this front panel off. I can probably just drop this out this way and have a look. If I have to disconnect this lot, I can do it later. Maybe I don't need to. Actually looking at it, I don't think these do go into these things. I can see down here. So from this one, I can see, yeah, the tab. At least one tab there. I can see the six pins, okay. And the other one, I can see two tabs on this one. That appears to have three pins there, okay. Like that's a mono output on the other zone, maybe. Okay. I'm sure it'll all be clear once I get this off. Okay. So this is the level. There are two metal tabs, in fact, they're there, this side of this chip, and that's the six pins. Okay. I think the soldering looks okay. Just have a quick look. Yeah, I'm just waggling the control slightly. That looks okay. I think it is going to be easier if I just take this panel off, actually. So we need to just release these. These are quite easy. So these are basically just a bit of glue. Probably hold them in place and they should come out. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll probably just number all these. I mean, I think it's fairly obvious by the length of wires where they go. But we can always put numbers on them. It's not a problem. It's good practice. One. One, you see, so on. Doesn't take much effort to do it. I think... We can say use one, two. I can't easily write on these, but if I just put them in order on here, can't go wrong. Okay, so this is the potentiometer. Normally with these, if I heat up the two tabs, I can actually just lift it off the board this way and then just get 
solder across all these pins effectively at the same time it just comes out the board i find that quite a good technique let's see if it actually works with this one so the tab okay and here's the other one some leaded solder to help the solder float reduces the melting point let's see if it's actually come out so what i would normally do is i'll put a little bit of pressure on here hit one after the other and see if i can just get it to flick out of the board and yeah this one of course doesn't want to play ball okay no worries we'll try a bit of braid a bit of flux if I have to, I'll get the vacuum desoldering tool. Let's see. This does not want to come easily. Okay. Put some flux on the braid. See if that helps. It helped a bit, but it didn't help a great deal. I rather hoped it would. I want to be very careful not to dislodge this little component here, of course. Okay, vacuum desoldering tool it is. Well, that's nearly warmed up now, so let's have a go. Put a bit of fresh solder back on. To give it a good chance, just make sure the thing is actually not clogged up at all. Yep, it's nice and clear. Warm it up a bit with the hot air. Just get a bit of heat into here, it'll help a lot. Or so the theory goes. Okay. Right. Now, let's try. So. This is proving difficult. Let's see if I can desolder the pins first. I might be able to point out to the board if I can get these unsoldered first. Looks clean. That looks clean. Have a little bit of solder there. Okay. Yeah. I'll just give a quick run through before it does clog up. Ok, 
Ai. I think we can say they're all clear. Let's see. Yeah, I can move them all, so they must be clear. No. These two tabs are proving difficult. Let's see what we can do. So, I'll just get some heat. Yeah, see now I've pulled it out of the board. Mostly. Uh, this one. Get some heat into it. Didn't move so easily that actually. It's come from the other side. So yeah, move then. Okay. Once more. Out that one came. This one's basically out. That is out. Once again, that's out. I think it's out, guys. Yeah, there. So that's how to remove those things, guys, especially when you're in a very cramped situation like this. What a very small surface mount components around here that I don't want to dislodge. And to be quite honest, this PCB was soaking up a huge amount of heat. Must be quite a heavy PCB. Just if I can balance it so it's not going to keep moving. And then we can clean up those holes. I'll probably do it with a solder sucker actually. Let's just have a go. So Yeah, and this one. Okay. Bit of isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Right, I have got some of these or similar. Question is, will they fit and are they the right value? Yeah, I have a lot of these type salvage ones. In fact, that one actually says five zero. Oh, B. So B will be analog. It's not a five zero. It's like it is. Yeah, it's a five zero. So 50K, I think. Yeah, five zero three. So three zeros. So that should be a 50K B. This is a 50K A. So A will be the logarithmic one. I'm not sure I have. Let me have a look if all the ones I have a B. Then this is not going to work here. Yeah, B. B. I'll check all the others. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, guys. Well, that is just sod's law. So these blue ones, I think, are all salvaged. They look like they've been soldered before. I think these are all salvaged ones. And these are all... B 50k you can see on the top and also in there as well and then I have a whole load of these which are new ones which I must have bought at some point for some job and just bought a whole batch of them unfortunately these are also B 50k they have a slightly different back on them but they will fit the same as that one so I'm going to have to order some of these in the A that's all I can do Shame, but I can't quite finish this one. This seems to be the story of my life. Uh, it's not like I don't buy this stuff, but... Well, sooner or later, hopefully, I'll have what I need a lot more often. So, I'll ask uh, Jose if they have these in the capital. Last Palmer's in the electronics shop. Let's also have a look on AliExpress. Well, they took a bit more finding. Most of the ones on AliExpress are the B. This seller has actually got A as well, A50K or A503. I can get five for six euros, plus a couple of euros postage, so they can go in the cart. 
with a bit of luck they may have these in the capital at Lopacan, Las Palmas but if they don't well I can get them from here anyway and actually the postage is not bad from China at the moment say in August well up to the beginning of September so a few weeks okay so we can get parts of this interesting the customer has said nothing about those two signal LEDs which are permanently on but the channels do work so let's see if this fixes it I've done what he's asked me to do the hard work which is desoldering the supposedly faulty one is done that was the hardest bit so it shouldn't be too much of a problem to solder the new one put it back together and then if he still has a problem with it you will see this again Okay, hope you enjoyed that and I look forward to seeing you all soon on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now guys.